Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kavinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at Blease's new Flanger app and I've got three copies to give away so look at the pinned comment at the top of the comment section. If you're watching this video in the first two days of release you'll have a chance to win one of those three copies. Please read the instructions very carefully everybody at the top of the comment section. All right thanks to Blease for that. Now in the video today I'm going to go through the app go through the different sections and explain everything. And I'm also going to let you hear it on a bunch of sounds, right? So first thing I'm going to do is let you hear it on a bunch of stuff. Later I'll explain how the app works. I'm going to try and keep this fairly short today. Maybe about 15 minutes, I'm hoping. All right, so it's probably going to be 20 realistically. It always never ends up uh, being as short as I think it's going to be. All right, so let's, uh, let's hear. Got reggae drummer here. And at the moment, I'm just letting you hear the hi-hats. Now put on a little bit of flanger. Okay, so, um, I mean, we could play around with some different settings there. For example, this one's pretty cool. Okay. Let's hear it on a little bit of bass. So, got an I fretless bass over here. This is dry. Now put on the flanger. Okay, um, that's that. Let's hear an instance of NFM. Synth by Nicolosi, nice FM synth. So what that's adding there is a nice bit of width. And some movement. Okay, let's hear it on, um, okay, Shroom over here. Now let me change this preset. Okay. This is cool. Like this one. I'll let you hear one more patch from here and then I'll explain how the app works. So this can be a pretty cool tool for, you know, weird sound design and stuff. It can add movement to pads. 
I definitely really like what it does on things like hi-hats, cymbals, that kind of thing. I mean, you can even just put it on a whole percussion set. It really depends what you're looking for and how experimental you want to be. Okay, so uh, let's see, let's see. Let me um, use a very simple little instance of an FM over here to explain how the app works. Just get a nice kind of pad sound and nice, easy, mellow listening. All right, close this. So first of all, we have a preset menu here. I'm not going to go into these small details, things you can figure out easily for yourself as soon as you've got the app. All right, so we have a filter. And all Blises apps have this. And that's a really nice feature of their apps. And we can run it a bit hotter if we want to, using the gain. And we have a couple of different filter types. We can just pull up here to change the resonance and so on. Okay, so that's that. Let's just uh, put it back to default. Okay, so then we have two LFOs. So, I mean, what is a flanger? Basically, a flanger, you take a signal, then um, copy it, then delay the copy of the signal, and then um, basically run through the delay time um, from top to bottom. You get this kind of flanging effect. So, let's see, let's see. Okay, LFOA, for example, here. So we can change the rate, and we can run it free, or we can sync it. I mean, it always really annoys me when things don't have a free rate option, so I'm glad that it has that. Now the offset will only work if you have it on beat sync mode and your host is running, the transport is running, right? So you've got to press play in your host. Now, bring the rate down, and let's look over here, right? This is representing the LFOs, and we have left and right of the signal, the stereo signal. So with the offset, I can basically manually move the LFO position. And phase, watch what that's doing. So you see here, these are completely offset by 180 degrees. So they're doing opposite things. The, the stereo, right? And here they're doing more or less the same thing. If I get it exactly on zero, they are. Double click, I think, to reset the default. Let's see. Yes. Double click to reset, that's always a nice feature. Okay, so we can do stereo things with this. We have the LFO depth here. And a bunch of LFO shapes. Let's increase the rate. So, you know, this is one of the things that a lot of flangers um, don't have. A lot of them do not have anywhere near this choice of LFOs, so that's very cool. That gives a lot more, a lot more options for sound design. Especially when you combine it with the filter. Okay. Let's find one that has LFOB going. Okay, here we go. Intense feelings. Okay, let's take a look at LFOB. 
So it's running free and it's very slow. So let's speed it up a little bit just to hear what it's doing. So the difference between LFO A and B is B can choose destinations. A only modulates the time of the delay, okay? Delay time over here. But here we have feedback and width. So LFOB can modulate time, but it can also modulate feedback and width. That's nice. That's not nice, why? Because the rate's too high, it doesn't suit that. Let's bring the rate down a little bit. We can get really nice slow rates here. That's another thing that I like. Okay, now here we have an envelope follower. So this will modulate the delay time based on the amplitude of the input. But this, this is not a good patch for that because we could use something more percussive. Let's, let's take a look, for example, at the drums again, maybe. We can change the attack and release. Okay. And so here, let's uh, go back to that patch to check out delay time. So we can go from 0.10 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds. We can invert the feedback. Polarity adds the wet signal to the dry signal if it's positive. If it's negative, it subtracts the wet from the dry. So there we go. There is um, Lise Flanger, everybody. So I think you could hear at the beginning that it has some pretty interesting sounds. Um, useful, definitely useful to bring movement to things. Uh, on those drums, it can get pretty freaky. I mean, let's, let's just uh, remind you of that. Let's see. I like this glitchy one. And this four bars one, real nice classic, just very slow movement. Also really nice on this kind of thing. All right, everybody. So I hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned, you know, for the next video. I think I'm going to have something coming in a day or two. And uh, please give this a thumbs up, write a comment, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks a lot for your support, everyone. Um, everybody, I'll just mention now for those who have made it to the end of the video, I'm still sometimes having problems with people who win prizes not responding to YouTube notifications. Now, I'm mentioning something about this in the comment below. 
but I just want to mention, make sure that your YouTube notifications are on. I don't mean the bell notification that's connected to the subscription to my channel. That's a separate thing completely. You need to, if you want to receive emails when someone replies to your comment on YouTube, you need to have uh, email reception enabled from YouTube and you do that in YouTube settings. So if, if you're not sure if you're um, getting messages or whatever, then just go to Google because uh, the instructions are going to depend on whatever device you're using and just Google something like um, YouTube email notification settings, something like that, and make sure that you're getting notifications. But you know, even if you do have notifications enabled, sometimes YouTube is just a bit weird and it just doesn't send you a notification. That can also happen. So if you want to see if you've won or not, always just come back to the YouTube page a few days after you watch the video and just check. Because in the main comment pinned at the top, after a couple of days, I always mention the winners there. And I also um, send a message to you as a reply to your comment in the YouTube comment section if you want. So in case you don't get a notification when I reply to you, just make sure you come back and look at that main comment and see if your name's there. All right, everybody. Thanks for uh, sticking through with us to the end. Okay, take care. See you next time.